Do you know that uh, Big Bang Theory was originally proposed in 1927 by George Lematier as uh, the origin of the universe? So Big Bang Theory never came from science. It was a, he was a Catholic priest and even Pope uh, 12 um, endorsed the uh, Big Bang as it uh, were closely to the origin theory in Abrahamic religion, Christianity and Islam, you will find that the, they create, the, they suggest that there is a point of creation. So uh, so it was endorsed, Big Bang Theory was endorsed much before the scientists came in to propose that uh, the universe started with the Big Bang. And today I will show you that how religiously dogmatic view, which was endorsed by church, and others, um, uh, the supporters went on promoting it. And later it became a scientific theory and a mainstream and kids all over the world are now brainwashed with this absolutely non-scientific, religiously dogmatic proposal, which has no scientific basis at all. So 10 arguments I will give you to prove that the science, the assumptions that are there in the Big Bang theory, none of them is, has related to any scientific condition that can lead to Big Bang. And it is just ad hoc, ad hoc, ad hoc, ad hoc, 10 situations, absolutely non-physical conditions, which are necessary for the Big Bang theory to be a, uh, to be possible. So that's why, uh, that's why I will make you take you a journey to this 10 absolute nonsenses, which are very foundation of the Big Bang theory. Any scientific theory you make, people will say, what is the falsifiability? What are the things that I can prove? If I saw that, then your theory would be wrong. You can't do this with Big Bang because to prove the divine origin, they took Einstein's equation and Einstein's Hilbert's equation and then modified it into FLRW. It's a Hamiltonian. And then, um, then in that Hamiltonian, if a uh, scale factor goes to zero uh, at a time equal to zero, you will find infinite energy density. And the condition for singularity with, with all infinity, infinity, infinity conditions, um, comes from nowhere, nowhere. You just take an equation and from future you go to the past, creating a condition that uh, I need this amount of energy. So let's make it infinite and then you start. It is not something before the condition that is leading over there. And not a single falsifiability you could induce because FLRW is totally ad hoc and the Catholic priest put some features into it in, in that equation, in Einstein's Hilbert equation, because it is always necessary that you start from Einstein uh, to make it credible. So that's what happens in the, happened in the 1927 or 1930s when Charles wanted to show it uh, uh, scientific. And um, that's why Pope endorsed, uh, endorsed the Big Bang Theory much before science came in. So number two, to prove that God created it, you will need to show some design. To do that, they took Klein Gordon equation and put a Hubble parameter into it. And to solve the problem of flatness uh, and the horizon problem of the universe, because you already have already taken infinite density and infinite other things. So what you do is take the Klein Gordon equation and create an expanding in, uh, universe and in inflation parameters. So basically, if different uh, different um, objects are moving from each other and uh, going uh, going in a different and you see red shift you come up with some uh, with some uh, 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 Hubble constant or something. But that doesn't mean that there were, I mean, Alpha Centauri is, is moving towards our galaxy. Then, then how do you, there is a blue shift. There are other examples of blue shifts. And then, then how do you see that? So, so one point, uh, you create it at one point, so you get a divine, divine creation. And after that, you need to include that, uh, after divine creation, there was intelligent design. So then what you do is you carry out step by step, there is a beautiful book called uh, First Two Minutes After the Big Bang. And when I was a kid and I, I, I read that book, it was beautiful science fiction. So you can understand how God was playing the role in creating an intelligent design in the first two minutes, first 40 seconds, for 50 seconds, whatever going on. And this inflation, inflatory universe and and 
condition after condition, condition after condition. Klein Gordon, Gordon equation is a quadratic equation. It's a simple equation. So two different kinds of solutions you get. How do you do that? So you take a tensor and you create a hard dimensional space and every single thing that you imagine over there is, uh, is uh, purposefully induced from nowhere just to make sure that intelligent design is going on. So it was truly intelligent to design by man. Our divine origin out of nowhere, God creates it. So that is the first uh, uh, thing where FLRW metric was introduced. Second thing was uh, intelligent design. So inflatory universe uh, came in. Now, third thing that you had to introduce was uh, in the Klein Gordon, uh, in the FLRW metric, uh, it, there is a certain condition that uh, the Hamiltonian for that would be homogeneous and isotropic. And they put it, they, they were a little bit considerate about the scientists, so put a plus rho. So, so uh, you will find that uh, uh, absolutely homogeneous isotropic because God cannot create diversity. God is homogeneously creating it. Then there is a little perturbation top. And then that was there. So what was the necessary third thing is that God is kind to all and uh, it's a homogeneous isotropic universe it is creating. You know that it is not. It is totally, totally different. But people introduce that perturbation term to look at scientific and grossly homogeneous and a little bit of perturbation here and there just to introduce, just to make sure that uh, perturbation is induced. But perturbation, who, who decides the perturbation? There's no science for it. Nothing is a randomly addressed in the FLRW uh, metric. And the fourth beautiful thing is dark energy. And uh, why do they need it? They need a negative pressure, right? Because you need to inflate the, uh, the universe. So to, because you need dark energy, you, um, uh, a negative pressure, you consider dark energy. And for that purpose, cosmological constant lambda that Einstein's field equation had, the 10 to the power minus 122. So this particular constant is absolutely non-physical constant. And uh, it, it's very difficult to, to prove it. It's non-falsifiable. As I say, this is the fourth non-falsifiable thing. And anthropic universe, that is the uh, argument of the of the uh, of the um, God created universe uh, theory uh, to, to, to justify that uh, uh, they brought this um, uh, uh, dark energy concept uh, to support the negative pressure and support uh, the inflator universe. So uh, this cosmological typical con cosmological constant with that with its incredible non physical value, which cannot be falsified because it's, uh, it's, a, it's a fundamental thing that was embedded <laughs> in the beginning of the universe. So so dark energy also have not been proved. Um, uh, so we are at the same place. So now we move to the fifth point. So uh, now we have to come to a to a point where we would talk about the quantum fluctuations. How uh, because theological need is you need to create uh, some varieties now in the universe because isotropic universe you have created where the varieties come from so you use that quantum fluctuation in the vacuum so there was a uh, uh, there was a theory of bunch davis vacuum which is absolutely uh, non testable so that kind of uh, vacuum was there everywhere and there was a quantum uh, fluctuations and that created a different diversities that we see in the universe so uh, it satisfies the religious need that you need a mysterious um, force that every point of the universe at every single point, even now, reconstructing and reconstructing the origin. So God plays through quantum vacuum fluctuations or bunch Davis uh, uh, vacuum uh, quantum fluctuation to create the diversities. So that's the kind of the, uh, the fifth point. Number six is you have to prove that when God creates the universe, you have to have purposeful design. For, for purposeful design, that, that should be matter, antimatter, uh, um, uh, fluctuation of the 10 to the power minus 10 order. And that uh, that's why Big Bang considered baryogenesis. And to what it helps is that um, in the standard model, you have charge parity variation. But for this baryogenesis, you need 
charge to charge parity violation and thermal equilibrium variations. So these three variations, when it will come, then variogenesis will occur, and then you will find the matter of an antimatter, and then the kind of duality in creation. So you need to have a very particular feature or phenomenon from a very mystical origin that can carry out matter's uh, purposeful design. So everywhere, some kind of mysticism, and this is the sixth mysticism in a row uh, that, you, that, you, that you need to uh, introduce in the model. And again, non-testable uh, to, to make sure that, that God is creating. And uh, now we'll move to seventh point, uh, how, uh, how God, God's theory of creativity uh, were, were induced in the Big Bang theory and is still in there and we are using it to brainwash our kids. But to create the universe, number seven point is uh, that you have to show that God wanted it. That's why he created it. So to prove that you need universal flatness. So if you take Friedman's equation and put, uh, if you put uh, k is equal to zero, you get absolutely flatness. And the, for inflation, there will be a fluctuation. But just before that, there was absolutely flat. So uh, God wasted to start the fluctuation. So that's why uh, the though Friedman's equation allows uh, this to this to happen, initial condition was totally arbitrary. So this arbitrariness is kind of a necessity in a very isotropic, non-physical condition. So that is kind of a wish of the God from entire flatness, suddenly there was a little fluctuation. And then they put uh, Friedman's equation. So as you can see that every single assumption is backed by some completely different uh, set of scientists who are coming together and introducing another set of non-physical reality, non-physical condition, arbitrary condition to, to support and survive. So it was a century old process, I would say, where where scientists were uh, were putting junk and junk and junk assumptions one after another to to make the theory look like scientific. Have you seen uh, in the old days when we were used to switch on our television, and then you see and that lots of particles are there. So cosmic uh, microwave background radiation is there. It is considered as the Big Bang uh, because of the thermal expansion. The, the, the cosmic relic of that is, uh, is the snapshot that, that you, were, you, were, you, were, you were seeing in the cosmic microwave background. This means the heat that came out and uh, that's uh, 10 to the 12 hertz around and then 10 to the 9 hertz, that is gigahertz, to terahertz, 5 to 6 terahertz is the kind of temperature that we have in our body uh, and an abundance of phonons uh, that that are generated, and when you you come to uh, come to gigahertz or around this kind of frequencies, uh, that's called the cosmic microwave background. And when you when you come to that, basically that's a that's a that's a relic of, of cosmic design where you are seeing that the creator is kind of uh, sending the signal and then giving uh, information to all around. So the mm, the CMB temperature fluctuation that is around ten to the minus um, five. Uh, um, are explained by Boltzmann's uh, distribution, not a quantum statistics. So whenever we need classical uh, Boltzmann kind of statistics, we apply there. Uh, wherever we need um, this statistics, that statistics, we do not remain uh, uh, fixed to a very particular kind of statistics and particular kind of value. And wherever necessary, uh, the relative value, relative temperature fluctuation and thermal gradient, we assume ad hoc manner, which cannot be testable. So in this case, um, Boltzmann statistics was used to, to justify the, uh, justify to create uh, the CMB, continuous micro background radiations, um, as a relic of uh, thermal uh, fluctuations, so thermal uh, radiation that came out during the time of bang, Big Bang. So uh, 
Another thing is that uh, nearly in the Planck scale, um, for the Big Bang to happen, you need to consider that there was quantum gravity. Out of nothing, only then at that, um, that particular scale, quantum gravity comes in. Why, how, we should not ask questions. And then there is a wheeler dewitt equation in which there is a very particular constant that was totally speculative and untestable that was considered to support that, uh, there, at that in that time region, there was quantum gravity acting. And that's why the universe uh, came out. And uh, you know that string theory has now been shown and argued that it has lots of imaginary thing. Too many imagination have flooded in. And that's why um, string theory, even though it was a beautiful theory, it um, it went into untimely death. And some, someday somebody would make some correction and bring it back with, with lots of reality. But even that string theory cannot explain that why this quantum gravity comes in at the Planck scale or Planck's time scale. So that is the number ninth. Number 10, the sweetest of all. Universe had a beginning and before that nothing existed. So monotheistic religions have uh, need this because God creates the universe, just like uh, Islam, Christianity or this kind of religions. While the polytheistic religions question that, like Hiranagarbhas or Tatagre Vedas, what was there before the creation? Oh God, where were you? If there was nothing, Nasadiya Sukta in the Rig Vedas ask the question that it is impossible that to for the existence of God before the creation of everything, because if nothing was there, God cannot exist. The very origin of God was challenged. So polytheistic religions um, uh, go for a completely different view, but uh, and and they cannot have this non-physical reality that uh, from a single point it starts. But you can understand now that in this world, similar kind of humans with similar genetic structures, only with a different faith, those who are polytheistic, they considered that uh, single point origin cannot be there. And they came up, like Hindus came up with the breathing of Brahma, cyclic universe theory, which inspired Einstein to propose a cyclic universe theory in, um, in 1930. And then Roger Pedrose, who actually worked significantly to, you know, on, the, on the construct of singularity, mm, uh, that absurd thing that happened 1960s, 1970s, Roger Penrose make, made a fundamental contribution, but he never believed in inflation. But um, there are 10 fundamental uh, um, godly aspects were embedded in, uh, and with time many many researchers from uh, very famous mathematicians from different different directions different different background supported it to, to survive this um, this uh, the, the theo the theologic um, monotheistic religions uh, uh, propaganda that started in the 1927 by a catholic priest uh, to become a science a mainstream and now we are brainwashing the kids of all over the world without telling this 10 points that uh, why this is not a science this is a religious in action in the in the in the face of a of a scientific uh, scientific advancement and scientific understanding of the universe so roger penrose has now come up with ccc um, uh, conformal um, uh, cyclic cosmology or uh, cyclic con conformal cosmology, whatever be uh, so geometric invariance and uh, many other kind of things come, and then uh, uh, universes kind of um, uh, existing all the way. So cyclic in conformal, cyclic in conformal, cyclic in non-conformal has to be cyclic. 